Hello everyone. Thank you for attending in the last hours of this conference. I will be talking about how life is going on Web3, how it is changing and what you can do, how you can participate. Because I think, and it's my personal experience, that the whole thing, Web3 and crypto, be it cryptocurrency, cryptography, um, it only makes sense if we do real life actions and if it makes some positive changes in life. For me, the journey started with Bitcoin in 2013. So that's when I first heard about it in a hacker space in Hungary. And I really like the idea that we have finally something that uh, helps us to replace uh, the, uh, the legacy banks and the old systems. So we have a new system where we can easily transfer value uh, to anywhere around the world. And, and we don't need banks, we uh, don't get censored, our balances do not get blocked, and it's a straightforward system that makes it possible. Of course, in uh, 2013, Bitcoin was not really known, not even the term blockchain was used. So not many people talked about blockchain, it was Bitcoin itself. So this turn was somewhere uh, around 14, 15 uh, started to be used. Uh, and that's when we started to talk about blockchain, which is basically uh, now the technology behind all the cryptocurrencies we see. And a little bit later, we will be uh, uh, seeing how the whole history went through and how we got to this technology, which is actually not a new technology. We had many things existing in the 80s and 90s. Uh, for me, when I started to use it, and I engaged with the community. It was mostly hackers and, uh, and developers in this community. So we uh, didn't have uh, too many people back then, but uh, we were people um, with the same kind of thinking. There are many crypto anarchists in this uh, field, uh, especially back then. And, uh, and I really liked how helpful the community was. The hacker community is very often super toxic and negative, but uh, Bitcoin started to change this. So a group of people came together and we started to have meetups and Bitcoin meetups. So, so we met in real life talking about Bitcoin and everyone uh, was uh, installing it on the laptop and we could still, um, still uh, uh, install it and use it and synchronize Bitcoin to a laptop. You need a very strong laptop now to, to do this. It's not even realistic, but back then it was. And uh, I was not expecting the five and 10 X's from Bitcoin. It was not about uh, uh, be becoming like a millionaire. It was about technology and the people who, who believe in this uh, change that, uh, that needs to happen. Uh, otherwise, the whole world is screwed and, uh, and, and we get into a dystopic uh, future. If you like sci-fi, then, then you can have many, many, many ideas. And how this turned out for me. So I was uh, working uh, in uh, security in Web2 and started to transit to Web3 and crypto. And uh, since then we had many events and many projects. And this uh, gave me a really good opportunity to uh, think differently and to, to do something that I think makes sense. And many of us who are in this community think that, that changing and shaping the world uh, to be better. So uh, I think, at, and these pictures I choose because, because uh, you can see there are many happy people and, and happy faces on this. And when you see it from the outside and you haven't uh, joined uh, many of the meetups or hackathons or conferences, um, <clears throat> You see this, and then you might see that this is uh, something cool, but the question is how did we get there and, and what is the real thing running behind that, that can uh, make changes? Because it's nice that, nice that we have uh, a good events and we are happy about it, we are eating pizza and talking polka dot, but how does it relate to, to real life? And what is changing? Um, if you look around the world and, and how, um, how it's changing, it's an, an astonishing speed how our life changed 
uh, in the last 20 years, uh, especially with uh, becoming more digital and uh, having uh, the, the cash money uh, replaced to digital wallets and you have all these kind of um, legacy and traditional banking systems running now on your phone. But the problem with them is the same what we had, is that they, they have full control over your balance. So that's one uh, idea in, uh, in Web3 that we want to transit to, to a system, uh, be it uh, Polkadot, Bitcoin, or uh, which are other system which, which is actually decentralized, on some levels at least, that you have the control in your hands and you do not get censored like with the traditional uh, banking systems. Uh, who has a company here? Who, who is entrepreneur? Okay, uh, so not going into that direction, uh, just shortly, uh, if you start your business and have, uh, need to have uh, moving uh, money, or like larger amounts of money, then this is a problem very often that uh, PayPal, Wise, or whichever banking system you use, it blocks your balance and you cannot access it for, uh, for weeks and months. And this can be a super huge problem for business. I never really had this problem because most of my business activity is happening through crypto and DOT. Sometimes I can't avoid using fiat money. We are not yet there, but, but I feel way better uh, about this, especially because I have the control and I set my own security. Uh, many people don't know, after uh, an amount, I think it's like one or two million dollars, uh, there is no insurance for your money. So if the bank is wrecked, your money is wrecked. So <clears throat> some banks go wrecked and some banks block your balance. So I, I feel better about uh, having control over, over funds. It's about uh, governance and the community, how we, uh, how we are working on daily life, how we uh, vote uh, in, uh, in the elections. Um, who, who, is in, who, who knows about the election system in the EU and how the uh, parliaments are relating to it? Okay. Uh, so let's say um, the governance you know so far uh, is uh, basically implemented on, uh, on Polkadot. We already have the code. You can imagine the, the voting system and election system running on-chain in a transparent way. And this is, this is very different because those machines that are running uh, uh, where, where you are doing the elections, I know it's, it's different in most of the countries, but, but it's not really a transparent system. The software and the hardware that is used is, is not transparent. If you look at the previous elections, in the US they had like a, a big fight around this and, and there were like uh, big issues with that. Uh, it, the software is not open source, it, it's not transparent. Uh, we saw also in Hungary that, that this, this system can be cheated in so many ways. If you are interested in how to hack uh, voting machines, there are really cool talks at uh, Black Hat and, uh, and DEF CON conferences. So there were talks about hacking um, voting machines. This can be avoided by, uh, by systems like, like Polkadot's uh, transparency, where you can all see all the votes and, and see who is voted what, and you have the, the control. <clears throat> And you cannot uh, cheat with fake votes, uh, for example, because everything is uh, set in the code. So social values are also uh, changing rapidly. So the, the values we had in the 90s, I think, are uh, shaped a lot since then. I'm not getting too much into how this is uh, changing the whole world. Uh, that's, that's not really my, uh, my topic here, but you can see that, that the values and how we behave with each other are very, very different compared to what it was like 20 years ago or 10 years ago. So these are the dry slides, keep up with me. There are only two more slides that has text, and the others will have uh, more, more pictures and, uh, and more actions. Uh, so the process of change, I think it's super important here because this helps you to understand uh, what kind of capability you have in your hand when you install a Web3 wallet, a Nova wallet or, um, or any other uh, cryptocurrency wallet. 
uh, how did we get there? What, what is this thing and how did, uh, did this whole thing happen? What can you do with this? Does it worth uh, spending time on this? Um, my approach is to look at things uh, as they change and to look at the story and by understanding the story and, and how it changes, then you can, you can understand if it really uh, helps you, if, if this makes sense, or if it's leading nowhere, if it's leading to a metaverse that is just a hype and, and, and it won't do anything, just take your uh, invested money. So once you notice it, once something is in your hand, uh, or, or there is a product about it, it's probably gone through many, many different shapes and, and it already uh, got into a manifested version of it. So if you really want to see what is coming up, you need to look into the small details and you need to dig into projects uh, deeper. Uh, you need to do a lot of due diligence and testing. Uh, now I'm not talking about due diligence. Uh, I'm talking about how we get there. And, and how this, um, this, this change is happening and going on and reflecting on Web3. So those who, who look into other technology, uh, especially uh, starting with Bitcoin, you will see the use of uh, cryptography, Merkle trees. Merkle trees, they, these were uh, basically invented in 79. That's not a new thing. Uh, we nowadays talk a lot about ZKP and uh, Ethereum is uh, doing the ZK rollups and whatsoever. ZK is a concept from 85. That's when they started to work on this. The smart contract uh, was uh, first, I wouldn't say invented, it was like a short paper. It was in, uh, in 96. So when Vitalik came uh, in uh, 2014 with his paper, he got this uh, older concept and said, okay, now we have this uh, technology with the Merkle trees and decentralized nodes. We have a peer-to-peer -peer communication like we had torrenting. Now we don't use peer-to-peer -peer for torrenting. We now use it for, for Bitcoin and transferring values. So we put the different uh, technologies together and he said, okay, now, now we have Bitcoin, why don't we do it with smart contracts so we can have something like an EVM, which was then uh, mostly coded by, by Gavin, Gavin Wood, who is uh, one of the founders of Polkadot. So as you can see, this, this, um, this technology and the changes, it's, it's not like someone just came in 2009 and, oh, okay, that's what we do, I invent everything. It is coming together from, from different uh, particles and then, then it becomes something when it starts being used. And Bitcoin started uh, its, its action, I would say, uh, when uh, people started to use it on, uh, on the dark web. Nowadays, it's good that um, when we talk about cryptocurrency, we are not uh, seeing in the media, oh, it's the dark web thing and everyone is selling drugs and weapons and all these crazy things. Uh, but the truth is that actually gave a big push because that's when it, it started to be used. That's when it started to have real value because those bad guys started to use it. Now it's used for more legitimate reasons. Um, well, it depends how legitimate you understand the trading and this kind of uh, mm, activities. So um, when we got to, to Ethereum, uh, there was a problem, which is interoperability. You can understand that this problem uh, with banks really easily because when banks started, they originally could not uh, transfer uh, fiat money between each other. It was like standalone banks, there was no internet, uh, and, and they didn't have a protocol uh, like SWIFT, uh, which, which was SWIFT as I think maybe 70s or something, where they, where they started to create the standard, so banks can transfer money between each other. Back then it was just you put your money into the bank and it was there, and you could pick up from there, but you couldn't transfer. So that's the same thing with blockchain. Uh, you have a blockchain, you have your assets there, you have your tokens, NFTs whatsoever, but it is, it is just uh, there and you cannot transfer it to another blockchain. And this is why Polkadot was created, to solve this issue and make interoperability possible so you can transfer assets, tokens, whatever you want between the blockchains. And, and now I think 
we are there where we are talking about uh, Web3 and what is this technology, and, and it's time to deliver. So now, if you look at the whole thing, we have the technology what is needed. We can make it more efficient, we can make it more efficient and, and performant and so on, but, but uh, we, we already have a usable system. We need to make it user-friendly, and we need to get to the point where, where it is getting adopted. I think Dubai is a really good example uh, of this because I, I travel there often. I see uh, since the last two years how they are transiting. When I was first there, they started to work on the, <clears throat> on the regulations. They pushed it out really fast. Uh, and after the regulations were out, uh, some smaller companies immediately implemented. Now you can buy uh, bread or, uh, or fruits or whatever you want in Dubai with crypto. And that's a super cool thing. They have the, the, the terminals and you don't just use it with, uh, with your credit card. It shows a QR code, you can send Ethereum. It's not that fast. That's why I, I, I really hope that uh, Polkadot will have a push there because Polkadot has six seconds of transaction time. That's, that's like a fixed transaction time. And for me, I never had any Polkadot transactions failing, uh, which, was, uh, which was dot transfer. It always went through in, in six seconds. And that's a huge thing. I think it's, it's an, an underestimated part of the system. So talking about values and promises, as, is, it, is it a valuable change that WEBS is bringing us? that a uh, lot of uh, people, companies, governments put into it, or it's something promises? I think uh, you can answer it for yourself if you do your own due diligence and look into the projects, and this also helps you uh, to, to figure out which are the shit coins and all the scams. And yeah, you might want to ask this question every time you see a big hype and you look into the hype and, and if there is like a real value behind or a real delivery. You could uh, see in the metaverse hype, there were like so many projects, but in which metaverse could you enter? In which metaverse could you do something useful? Uh, I only know about one where we could do meetups. That's the only metaverse. Everything else was like, just crude. Still, the metaverse hype was huge and is still going on. It, 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 in, in some countries, it's still crazy. So I always say, focus on utility, because those things that have real utility will stay, because utility makes things being used. Uh, if, if it's just a promise, it will just die, and your money is gone, and, and it, it made no sense to, to make it happen. So Web3 in short, to, to close the explanation on what Web3 is uh, and how we got there. So blockchain is the technology. Today we call it like this, but you can see this is uh, consisting of many, many, many different technologies and things coming together. And Web3 is <clears throat> trying to be the new internet. So we, uh, uh, we want to replace the uh, censored Web2 internet, the uh, front-end, back-end model, where uh, anything uh, can be controlled by the, by the company or the one who is uh, owning the server. We want to create a new kind of internet, including financial models, communication models, and, and everything, and make it, uh, make it uh, more uh, transparent and uh, truthful and give the, the power uh, back to the people. Because Google, Amazon, uh, big companies, they are, they are not giving us any power. They are taking the power from us. So for me, Web3 in many ways is about fighting back and, and taking back uh, what, what was taken by, uh, by a lot of trickery, uh, which we have seen. Like, uh, who, who doesn't have Google accounts here? So basically, it means that every uh, data you are storing, it's, it's, it's uh, in uh, Google's hands. They can do whatever you want with it. What can you do with Google? You can only do what Google allows you to do. I think it's a very, very big issue. Maybe it's fine now, but uh, think about 5, 10, 20 years and how the world is changing. Who, who, who is in control? Who you want to be in control? So Web3, most of the time, is blockchain-based. There are some people like, uh, or, or uh, organizations like Mozilla. Mozilla have their own concept of Web3. It's a very different concept, but everyone agrees that 
we want to do the internet thing differently than what it was before. It doesn't mean we replace everything. We will have many protocols. We will have HTTP staying. HTTP is a Web1 protocol. We still use HTTP. So many things will stay. But, but how we use the technology and the logic built up on it uh, should be different. <clears throat> so it only makes sense if it's a living system. Um, and, and here is a catch uh, with decentralization. You can decentralize all the technology. You can make uh, mathematically uh, correct and, uh, and truthful systems and, uh, and make it look really good on paper, but there are people behind uh, the actions. And this must be a living system in a way that people are aware of, of the technology and what we are using and the decisions because you can't remove the human factor and you cannot change the human be behavior with technology. Okay, that's not, not fully true, but, but you see the point. Human behavior is a, is a very different topic. And even if you have the best technology, if you do not know how to use this, and if you, if you, are, uh, if you don't have the awareness, then, uh, then you will be voting on stupid things. So you need to learn to use it. You need to engage with the community. And that's why I think Web3 and, and, and in Polkadot, our community is super cool because we come together, we talk about these topics, and, and we take actions, and we use on-chain governance. We are not uh, sending uh, emails all over like many other projects, but we are utilizing the tools we have, and, and, and we understand what we are doing in the, in the ecosystem. So the objective presence and connecting together on, in events like this or meetups, hackathons, whatsoever, I think is uh, super, super important and, and it uh, creates a, a stronger, stronger community and a stronger system and people won't abandon the, the machine. And hopefully machines won't abandon us in the future. Uh, it's up to us. So Polkadot, in uh, summary, is implementing on-chain governance um, I think um, there were already some talks about it uh, during the day or a workshop. This was a workshop, right? Ah, okay. Ah, okay, so staking. But staking is also in some ways an example on how you use the, uh, the Polkadot system and, uh, and how you can interact with it. So... Polkadot is focused on utility, so the DOT token is not, uh, not a, a token which is doing nothing. It, it is helping the Polkadot relay chain, the Polkadot ecosystem, to, to connect the blockchains together. So DOT is not, uh, not a, a token which you buy and you are waiting, oh, when will it be 5x? No, it is something you want to use. The system is continuously using to, to keep it alive. So this is, this is a truly utility token, maybe the mostly utility token of all. I don't know all the projects, but, but I'm pretty convinced as Polkadot ambassador that, that uh, in Polkadot this is something that, uh, that continuously and actively uh, utilized. We have the Polkadot ambassador program, so everyone is open to, to join the community. Everyone is welcome to contribute, and that's why the ambassador program is, exists. You can apply and become a candidate by the application, and, and you can decide what you want to do. You can do uh, content creation, you can organize events, you can do community moderation, you can, you can do many, many things. It's a huge ecosystem, there are so many tasks, so it's, it's basically up to you how you contribute and then you can uh, move on and, uh, and become full-pledged ambassador. Why would you do this? It's because maybe you uh, believe in the same thing we do, and also because you want to do more with the community and you want to engage with the network. And for me, just as it started with Bitcoin, there is reason why now I'm doing uh, what I'm doing with Polkadot, is because for me this is what, uh, what is implementing uh, this decentralized community in the, in the most efficient way. I, I don't have a better alternative. Uh, I could be with the Ethereum or the old Bitcoin uh, groups, but they are not really doing that, that kind of thing we do here. 
And yeah, uh, cross-chain communication. That's what I just explained about utility. And uh, Polkadot is not the only blockchain uh, solving the cross-chain communication, but, uh, <clears throat> but the technology behind Polkadot substrate is used uh, by most of the most of the uh, most of the people. So, how do you participate? You can already get started. I'm not sure if this QR code. I, I think it might still work. Uh, it's a bit cut on the side. Um, so you can start uh, with using Nova Wallet or Fearless Wallet uh, on your phone. You just scan the QR code, uh, install the wallet, and play with it and use it. That's that's the most important. Uh, for me, it makes no sense when there is like a huge conference and people uh, talking about things and a new action is taken. You can take action and install Nova Wallet and and try to look into the features. Uh, if you come to our uh, Polkadot booth um, on the other side of the building, uh, if you want to play around with, I send you one dot and just just use it. Uh, back then, when, when there were no exchanges, when we used Bitcoin, that's how it went. We sent Bitcoins to each other, the, the Bitcoins uh, we mined, or someone new was coming, oh, I want to use Bitcoin, but I don't have, how can I get there? Come and, and we give you some. It's like one dot is not a problem, and, uh, and you can already do something. And when the next governance system is coming to Polkadot, you, you can already participate, even if you have just uh, one dot you can you can use it um, in uh, in OpenGov. So right now we have uh, an older version of governance running in Polkadot. I'm pretty sure you don't see this uh, clearly because even I don't see this clearly. Uh, but in summary, um, on-chain governance uh, now works in a way where we have a council. You have a proposal. Let's say you want to organize an event like this one. And you write a proposal, you tell what you do, the agenda, all the details, you create an event plan. Uh, you, create, uh, you, you collect the quotes, uh, which uh, provider does what for you, the catering, the food, all the details, and, and you send it to a discussion. Then the community sees your proposal, and you get feedback if it's a good idea or not a good idea, and then you can make the, the on-chain uh, proposal, you need to lock some dot because there needs to be some protection so the system is not uh, spammed by anything. <clears throat> and if uh, the council votes this in because they agree that your idea is a good one and it helps the Polkadot ecosystem, you will uh, get funded. This is a very, very uh, short explanation of what governance does, but in its core essence, that's the idea, that you can propose something on-chain in a fully transparent way, and there are people from the community, which is now a council, deciding about it, and this is the big change that is changing in the next version, in OpenGov, is that now everyone who has DOT, uh, you, can, you can vote. Or, you can delegate your, uh, your voting power to others. Like how we do it in the EU, is that uh, we have um, <coughs> uh, those in the parliament uh, who are representing the representative uh, uh, people of the, of the country. They are elected by, by the country, so, so that you can imagine it like this. So you say, okay, he's a, he's a, a very knowledgeable and, and, uh, and very professional about, uh, about organizing events, so he should be the one uh, going to the, the system, so, so he should be voting, uh, and I give my voting power to, to him or her. It works very similarly, so this is not, not something that never existed before, but this is happening on chain, and that's the cool thing about it. This is decentralized, this is transparent, and you can always see uh, what happened, and you can see it historically. So it's not like, oh, there were some money going into the, some projects, and we don't really know the tracks and how it went and who was taking the job. So this is a clear system. I'm not sure how it's going in, 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 uh, in, in Czech or other countries. We have some problems with that in Hungary, for sure. So transparency is very, very important. Um, 
especially when we talk about democracy and, and these kind of systems. You can join the ambassador program if you are interested, become a candidate. If you want to ask about it and how it works, uh, we are here to help. Um, I'm responsible for the Eastern European region, so if you join uh, as a candidate, you will be uh, connecting to me, uh, and I will be helping if you have questions or, uh, or want to figure out what you want to do or uh, who you want to connect. Mm, it's up to you. Uh, it's always open. We are fully inclusive of anyone, so your background doesn't matter. So feel free to, to join if you would like to. And I think I'm in time because I should finish like 5.10, right? Okay, I still have one minute. Uh, that's my contact. You can reach me out anytime you want. And do you have any questions? If there are no questions, then I'm giving the mic back. Thank you very much.